as Donald Trump's legal problems continue to grow, Democrats are making a big push for transparency. More than three dozen House Democrats called for cameras in the courtroom during the DOG's cases against Trump. It is something Trump's own attorney was asking for just a few weeks ago. The first thing we would ask for is let's have let's have cameras in the courtroom so all Americans can see mm. what's happening in our criminal justice system. And I would right. hope the Department of Justice would join in that effort so that we, we take the curtain away and all Americans get to see what's happening. Earlier today, our friend Neil Katayal laid out the importance of having those cameras in the courtroom. Here's why. Don't underestimate Donald Trump's ability to try and, you know, say stuff outside of court and his, you know, his party and his lawyers and so many others, all of which can undermine the decorum anyway. The best check on that, this is something one of our greatest justices, Louis Brandeis said, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Let the American people see this trial for themselves day in and day out and make their own determinations. We shouldn't be, you know, relegated to secondhand descriptions and some courtroom sketches of what's going on in that courtroom. Meanwhile, the former president launched a threatening post on his social media site earlier today, writing this, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. Just a few hours later, prosecutors proposed a protective order citing that very truth social post. They're asking the judge to stop Trump from sharing sensitive documents with the public turned over by prosecutors. This all happened less than 24 hours after the judge directly warned him that bribing, influencing, or retaliating against witnesses is a crime. And tonight at a campaign event in the state of Alabama, he went after the special counsel. But despite the demented prosecution of our movement by our corrupt and highly partisan Department of Injustice and deranged Jack Smith, doesn't he look deranged? You see the picture with the purple robe? He's a deranged human being. We're getting stronger by the day. Somebody said, you should treat him nicer. Maybe he'd be nice. Let me tell you, this guy is a lost soul. The Republicans better get tough and they better get smart because most of them look like a bunch of weak jerks right now. And you got to get tough and smart and you have to fight fire with fire. You can't allow this to go on. Quick asterisk, Department of Injustice. The majority of things laid out in this indictment came directly from the January 6th hearings. And reminder, almost all of those witnesses were Republicans. And despite spending the evening in nearby Alabama, the former president did not appear in Florida today for the superseding indictment arraignment in the classified documents case. Instead, he entered a not guilty plea through his attorneys. I have been waiting days to talk about this. For the first time, music superstar Lizzo is talking about the lawsuit filed against her by three of her former dancers. She denies the claims of sexual harassment and a hostile work environment, calling them unbelievable and outrageous. My colleague Joe Fryer has a closer look at what she's being accused of. Yeah, it's thick, pretty. Lizzo's hit songs are often accompanied by messages of body positivity. Watch out for the big girl. While promoting her Emmy-winning reality show, Watch Out for the Big Girls, Lizzo told today she was looking for dancers who match that message. I finally had the platform to do an open call audition for girls who look like me. But in a new lawsuit filed by three former dancers, Lizzo was accused of weight shaming. One of the dancers, Ariana Davis, says Lizzo called attention to her weight gain with thinly veiled concerns, though she never explicitly stated it. I just had this feeling that they had a problem with the way I was gaining weight. Davis filed the suit with Crystal Williams and Noel Rodriguez. They allege that at an after party at a strip club in Amsterdam where sexually explicit acts were taking place on stage, Lizzo began inviting cast members to take turns touching the performers. I briefly touched the performer. I was very mortified. Everyone burst into laughter. It's something Davis says she didn't want to do but felt pressured to do. I did not ask for it. Um, I said no multiple times. According to the suit, the dancers also allege Lizzo falsely accused them of drinking alcohol before shows. And because of that, they were forced to audition for their jobs again. She would pick and choose when she wanted to be professional and when she wanted things to be personal. 
Both Williams and Davis say they were fired this past spring while Rodriguez resigned. In an interview, Davis also describing an interaction with Lizzo not outlined in the lawsuit. She proceeded to say, you know, dancers get fired for gaining weight. You should basically be grateful to be here. Joining us to discuss, Christy Lee Gandoli, senior entertainment reporter for Rolling Stone. This is a shocking story. For people who might not be familiar with Lizzo and her music, can you explain her brand and how it starkly clashes with this lawsuit? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having me. Lizzo, for the last handful of years, has really built such a powerful brand, empowering people, mostly women, in a very body and sex positive way. Her music, her fashion, her, you know, every interview she does, she's really become this icon in pop culture, um, portraying body and sex positive messages for women everywhere. So for this lawsuit to come about and for women who work directly with her to have these kinds of allegations is such a stark contrast to her public facing image. How are her fans responding? Well, so far, people have not taken too well to the allegations nor to Lizzo's response. Um, Lizzo categorically denied everything. She also has uh, sought representation by way of Marty Singer, who historically has represented celebrities like Bill Cosby, most recently, um, you know, celebrities who are accused of sexual harassment and pretty heinous things. And I think so far it was reported that She's lost 150,000 fans on Instagram. Um, also, most notably, I should say most notably, Beyonce, who is currently touring and has a great relationship with Lizzo Pryor, has removed her name that she usually mentions in her Break My Soul remix, um, obviously trying to distance herself from Lizzo. So people are not taking too well, again, from this stark contrast and dichotomy in Lizzo's public facing image compared to what people are learning allegedly happened behind the scenes. The fact that Beyonce would drop Lizzo's name from her lyrics so quickly, what does that say? Is it that um, there is something valid to these claims? It was known in the dance community. You would think if that's your girl, if you are close enough, if you like her enough to put her in your song, you might not drop her day one. I can't speak to what is known in the dance community, but I just think in this climate and in, you know, with the Internet and the way that people are holding celebrities and abuse of power to account. I'm not surprised that Beyonce or anyone would really want to distance themselves from Lizzo. If it could hurt, I mean, Beyonce's on tour. <laughs> if it could hurt her image to include Lizzo's name in a lyric. I mean, these are pretty serious allegations. You know, obviously the weight shaming and the body shaming is not great. Um, but in addition to that, the sexual harassment and misconduct allegations are pretty serious. So I, I could see why someone famous would not want to be aligned with that. Um, how about other dancers who are currently or formerly working with her employees? Anyone else come out for or against Lizzo or, or these plaintiffs here? So um, after the allegations from her three former dancers, um, a filmmaker and director who worked with Lizzo a couple years ago, I think back in 2019, came out and said that she also quit working on the documentary two weeks after working with Lizzo because she felt like Lizzo also fostered this toxic workplace environment. She was very unhappy to be there. She felt disrespected and mistreated after, again, only two weeks of working with her. Um, the director came out and said that she wanted to share her experience to support other Black women who are speaking out about this. She didn't want to be silent, which is something you see in news cycles like this and in stories of this nature. Usually there's power and safety in numbers. If you are a victim or an alleged victim of this kind of behavior, you see other people speaking out. You feel a little bit safer coming forward. So, you know, this one director did, which you know, may or may not help corroborate 
these dancers experiences. And again, you kind of never know if there are other alleged victims, they might see that and feel more empowered to continue to come forward. So while this has been unfolding for a few days, we may be at the beginning of, you know, what else is to come. We'll soon find out. Christy, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it.